I got job offers from Google, Meta, IBM, Amazon, Morgan Stanley, Microsoft, and Snap using this exact blueprint, and here's how you can do the same. Hi friends, I'm Maddie and I'm a senior software engineer. I got my bachelor's in computer science and engineering from MIT and worked at Google as a software engineer. Before that, I interned at companies including Amazon, IBM, Microsoft, and Morgan Stanley. On Instagram, I post a lot of coding memes and insights, so go and follow me there if that interests you. And one of the most common questions I get in my comments and DMs is, how do I crack the coding interview? I've also interviewed dozens of candidates while at Google. So today I'm giving you the exact framework I used to land multiple offers. And trust me, it took a lot of trial and error and a bunch of rejections to get there. The strategy really helped me personally when I was interviewing both as a new grad and when I was interviewing a couple months ago, and it's worked for others too. My advice has helped some of my followers currently in university get internships and full-time roles. So let's dive right into it. First, before any of the technical stuff, there is some prep you'll need to do before you get to the interview stage. In 2025 especially, it's honestly a numbers game with layoffs and offshoring and a bunch of other new grads competing for the same jobs with computer science degrees and even masters or PhDs. Even if you have the most perfect resume, I can guarantee that you'll get rejected and ghosted by more companies than you can count. You'll want an organized system to help keep track of all of your applications. Applying randomly to every single listing you see will not get you anywhere. When I was job searching, I kept a spreadsheet to track every single job I applied for, and this included the company name, specific role, date applied, um, application status, recruiter contact, and stage of the interview I'm currently in. I'd also add notes like location and compensation. This made sure that I never ghosted a recruiter by accident, and I could follow up strategically a couple days later if a recruiter didn't get back to me after a call or interview round. Next, let's talk about the resume you're sending to these recruiters. First, make sure it's ATS friendly. There are online ATS resume scanner tools you can use. Read the job description and make sure to sprinkle in any relevant keywords from the listing and write down any of the exact technologies you've worked with that match the ones mentioned in the job post. Use numbers and action words to highlight your impact and don't just list your responsibilities, actually show the impact of your work. For example, instead of saying, I worked on improving application performance, say, optimize caching strategy, reducing application latency by 12%. Instead of saying, coded an internal tool, say, built an internal deployment automation tool that reduced manual effort by 30%. And finally, proofread. I know this sounds so obvious, but look over your resume multiple times and have someone else review it for things like typos, grammatical errors, and overall structure and content. I've read so many resumes that had super obvious typos. Next, let's talk about the tactical interview. I've broken this part down into a pre-interview studying plan as well as a during the interview strategy. I'm going to preface this by saying that this video focuses on the new grad or internship interviews, so I will not touch upon system design here as that's typically reserved for mid-level and higher suite roles. I'll also be going over the technical concepts at a rather high level. So if you're interested in seeing a system design deep dive or a data structures and algorithms walkthrough, make sure you're subscribed and I might make those in the future. You should know these data structures and algorithms very well. For studying for the technical interview, if you have a few months before internship season starts, which is typically around August or September, go over the textbook Intro to Algorithms, which is also called CLRS. If you've never taken a data structures and algorithms course, I'd allocate probably three months. If this is just a review, maybe do one month. Definitely get very familiar with the chapters covering the basics like foundations, data structures, graph algorithms, um, but you can definitely safely ignore the topic like MP completeness, advanced data structures, and red black trees. When you get closer in time to interview season, let's say three to four weeks, start skimming through the book, cracking the coding interview, and do a few of the practice problems in each of the sections to solidify your understanding. To keep yourself on track, I definitely recommend making a study plan in your calendar and block out chunks of time for the material you want to get through. After you feel comfortable with data structures and algorithms theory, start solving practice problems online on platforms like HackerRank and LeetCode and do mock interview whiteboarding practice. I recommend investing in a LeetCode premium subscription because that gives you access to tagged past interview questions for many companies out there. If you have specific companies that you wanna target, you can then filter for the most relevant questions. However, keep in mind that it's more important to focus on patterns rather than just memorizing solutions for specific problems. For learning patterns, I recommend starting off with LeetCode 75, which is a curated problem set that has a structured progression and a mix of LeetCode easy, medium, hard questions that covers a wide variety of topics and concepts that you'll frequently find in coding interviews. If you have time, try Neat Code 150, which is a superset of the LeetCode 75. If you get stuck on a specific problem, don't spend all day on it. 
after about 30 minutes, if it's a medium question or 45 minutes, if it's a hard question, look at the solution, try to understand it and move on. The probability you're going to see the exact same question as one that you studied is quite low during an actual interview. Many interview problems follow really common approaches like sliding window, two pointers, dynamic programming, BFS and DFS, or graph traversal. So by recognizing these patterns, you can then apply them to a wide range of problems, even those that you've never seen before. Aside from lead code, whiteboard mock interviews, which is when you're given a problem and then pretend to solve it like you're in an actual interview, are useful because they test your ability to write the actual code in a timed, pressure-filled environment and communicate your solution to the interviewer. Also, they're crucial for preparing for companies like Meta, where the actual interview is done in a notepad that cannot actually execute code. Next, let's talk about your game plan during the actual real interview. The biggest mistake I see candidates make when starting off is jumping straight into the code. Remember that in a coding interview, it's not only about getting the right answer, it's also about demonstrating how you think and communicate. Here are the steps I always follow. Step one, ask any clarifying questions to remove ambiguity. For example, think about can the input be negative? Can there be duplicate values? Does case matter? If the interviewer hasn't provided a clear test input and output, also make your own and ask the interviewer if it's correct. Step two, if you don't have a clear idea on how to optimize the solution, code up the brute force solution quickly, but then be sure to tell your interviewer something like, I know this is not the optimal solution, but I'll just first write it down so we have something to work with. Step three, optimize the solution. If it's a DPA problem, implement memoization. Some other common techniques are things like hash mapping, sorting with two pointer or binary search, and implementing greedy heuristics. Step four, Give the runtime and space time complexity of your solution in big O notation. I always look at this chart right before interviews for this. Ask your interviewer if you should improve on it or if it makes sense. Step five, if you have the solution, write down test cases and make sure to include edge cases. For example, if the input is an array, consider cases with arrays of length zero, length one, have duplicate values or are very large. Then walk your interviewer through the code for each of these cases. During the entire coding interview, and I cannot reiterate this enough, do not be afraid to ask Ask questions. Another mistake I see candidates do is panic and then fall completely silent. Verbalizing your thought process gives the interviewer a glimpse into your mind and a chance to guide you back on track if you start going in the wrong direction. As a side note, I know we live in a world of AI, but please do not use AI to cheat during these interviews. Even if you have no moral qualms about it, it's incredibly easy to get caught. And if you do get caught, some companies will ban you for years, if not life. If a candidate suddenly gets the answer working perfectly, but cannot explain the code, that's a massive red flag. I've also personally seen candidates clearly reading off an explanation. Just please do not do this to yourself. And that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. And if this helps you, let me know in a comment. And if you want me to make similar videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. See you the next one.